Hello, it's Duncan. I usually record these videos in one sitting, but what with one thing and another, this one has been split over three days. As a result, this cold will disappear at the beginning, only to reappear halfway through. I hope you can put up with the distraction as we look at the behaviour of our parallel map implementations when it comes to errors and cancellation. After the fun of noisy microbenchmark results in our last episode, I finally come up with a scheme that I'm happy with. What I'm doing now is using repeated tests to run lots of repetitions of each one of these test functions. And in measure and check, we're adding these to a static list where we keep the test info and what I'm now calling concurrency rather than parallelism. When all the runs are finished in this after all, we process the list of runs, calculating statistics on the concurrencies. So what I do is I sort the list and remove the most and least concurrent. And then we work out the mean and standard deviation from that and finally print them all out. And that's what we see here. You can see the plain old Kotlin version with no concurrency effectively runs 0.9 times the total number of sleeps. The parallel stream version 6.4 and so on. As we might expect, the highest amount of concurrency we can get is with the coroutines and using a delay rather than sleep. And as I think we saw last time, the coroutines version on a thread pool with thread sleep is consistently just a little bit slower than the plain old thread pool version. And that's to be expected, I think, because the coroutines code will add some overhead. And same is true of the parallel stream on a fork join pool that we wrote at the end of last episode. So do these numbers really matter? Well, I don't suppose they do. We went down the rabbit hole because the coroutines version was looking drastically slower and we wanted to understand that. But now that we do understand that, it looks like any of these concurrency results would be good enough for us with the possible exception of the parallel stream version where we don't specify the thread pool, where on this machine at least we can only be 6.4 times as concurrent. So if all these have the potential to be sufficiently performant, how do we go about choosing which one to use? Well, I think the other thing we should probably look at is how they fail. In order to establish that, I've written this parallel map failure mode test so that you don't have to. Its structure is much the same as a previous test in that it runs this check function on different versions of map. Let's have a look at what this check function does. So here we are, and you can see that it takes our map function and it applies to an input. And the thing that it runs on every input is that it sleeps for a random amount of time up to 50 milliseconds, and then it throws an exception. Now, what do we expect to happen? Well, I'm not really sure, but I do know that I expect that this function shouldn't be able to return a result at all because of all these exceptions will be thrown here. So all I'm doing, in fact, is catching the exception and printing it out at the end. Let's run this test. OK, two things stand out. One is that the threads version has failed. And the other is there are lots and lots and lots of stack traces in system error. Let's see if they have the same cause by running just the threads version on its own. And yes, indeed, we've got this shouldn't be here. So the threads version did, in fact, return from this map function. I wonder what it returned. Let's just find out by giving ourselves some debug and running again. Well, that's interesting. We seem to have returned a list full of nulls. It's also a little perplexing because Kotlin is telling us that that list can't contain nulls. Let's try and work out what's going on. Okay, here's our parallel map threads. And you can see we start with an atomic reference and that atomic reference will have a null inside it to start with. Doing then is we're calling our function and using that to populate the atomic reference. But if this function throws, nothing will be populated. And in fact, threads are happy for us to throw exceptions. But if we don't catch them, they just print them to stood out. And that's what we're seeing here, once for every one of our threads. So this is an uncaught exception handler in the thread that by default just prints. So the thread actually exits, we join it here, and then here, we're going back to the atomic reference, which is still unpopulated, and using that as this slot in the map. So that's why we're getting all these nulls. If we want to solve that problem, we can make this an atomic reference of our result type, R and a throwable. And then in here, we want success if we succeeded. And if there's a failure, and we could better take any throwable, we'll put in a failure. And so now our map is full of atomic reference of results. So once we dereference the atomic reference, we can say, no throw, we'll rethrow the exception we got from here. Let's see whether that's true. And now it at least passes the tests and doesn't print anything to system out. 
Okay, let's return to all the tests. Okay, now that the tests are passing, and as you may be able to hear, I've picked up a cold, let's look at what the rest of this output is showing us. First of all, here, we're printing the test name and the exception that we catch. And you see in the case of the Kotlin version, the exception that's being thrown is the illegal state exception that we're getting from this error here. So we're throwing an error from our map, and we're getting that error back out again. For the parallel stream version, we're also getting a legal state exception. But for the parallel stream with the fork join pool version, we're not getting the original exception out. We're getting a concurrent execution exception that wraps the illegal state exception. Now, execution exception is a Java checked exception, and that's thrown by this get here. So because we've submitted a callable, get is allowed to throw the check execution exception. Our threads version here, that's throwing the original exception. But the thread pool version here, again, we're doing a get. And again, that wraps any exception that was caught as part of the processing. Finally, you can see for both the coroutines versions, they are throwing the original illegal state exception. Now, what's this number here? Well, when we raise an error, we put the string that we raised the error for. So in the case of the Kotlin version, we're seeing the error for the first item we processed. And that's true also for the threads version. But for the other ones here, you see we're not seeing the first exception that happened. In this case, we're seeing 44, the fork join 1, 26, and the coroutine 6 and 5. So depending on our implementation, if there is any failure in the function that we're mapping over, then the map will fail, but the exception that it throws may not be the exception for the first item in the list. Because we're sleeping for a random amount of time, it may actually have been the first chronologically, I really don't know. There's one other thing I'd like to know, which is how many of the map functions have actually been invoked. We can do that by adding in an invocation count in here and make that an atomic integer. And then in here, we will add one to it. And atomic integers are safe between threads. And then finally, when we're done, we'll sleep just for a little time to make sure that all threads have had a chance to complete. And then in here, we'll put out the invocation count. And if you're really following along, you may want to pause and consider what you expect that number to be for our different implementations. Let's see, shall we? OK, here are the results. For the Kotlin version, a plain map. Well, then we're not doing anything asynchronous. And so our very first run through this function, we'll sleep and then throw. We'll have added one, and that will be the end of this operation. The parallel stream version and the parallel stream with the fork join pool version are more interesting. In these cases, you can see that we've got an error for 57 in the first case and 70 in the second. Now, for the plain parallel map stream, though, we only made 36 invocations. Now, there are 100 items in the list, so 64 of those we didn't even try. And that shows the parallel map stream version has been cancelled by the error. But this is larger than 36, which also shows that there's batching going on in the parallel map stream. In the case of the parallel map stream with the fork join pool, though, because the fork join pool allows a lot more parallelism, the batch size will be smaller, and so we have, in fact, tried to invoke all 100. The threads version, well, we know that we started 100 threads and they all tried to run, so we know we're going to see 100 invocations. And we also know here that the first error will cause us to throw, and that's why we see the error for number one. The thread pool version, again, we see the error of the first one because we map through these in order, and again, we see 100 invocations because we don't attempt to cancel. As far as the throw pool is concerned, these are all independent jobs. And finally, the coroutines version. Here you can see that we saw a very early error, and that we only made 25 calls. So as with the streams version, the coroutines version is able to cancel future work when it sees there's an early error. And finally, the coroutines delay version, we should discount that because we are, in fact, not increasing the count in here. So let's try and summarize what we've learned under the headings of concurrency, what's thrown in the case of errors, and how things are cancelled when something goes wrong. First of all, if we just use Kotlin map, then we have no concurrency, and we throw the original exception, and that happens immediately. If we use Java streams, then we get some concurrency, we throw the original exception, and some of the pending operations will be cancelled if there's a problem. The same cancellation applies to streams where we specify the fork join pool, but there we can get higher concurrency, but we don't throw the original exception we get the exception wrapped in an execution exception. Our threads version was very concurrent and throws the original exception. 
But not only is there no cancellation, but we started many threads as there are items in the map, and that's just too dangerous for production code. When we use a thread pool, we get a lot of concurrency. We wrap our original exception in an execution exception, but we don't get any cancellation. Everything we started off is run. Now we could rewrite our thread pool version to support cancellation, but this is our naive version. And finally, in the case of coroutines, they throw the original exception. They're quite concurrent, especially when we're delaying rather than sleeping, and they do support cancellation, so that on failure we won't run tasks that we don't need to. There's one final aspect of behavior, though, that we haven't really talked about, and that's what happens while we're running the map. In all cases but the coroutines, we're blocking the thread that makes the original call. Our parallel map coroutines, though, is a suspend function, and that means that the thread that calls this won't be blocked while it's doing its job. So now we've gathered evidence, which version should be used for Gilded Rose? To be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure yet. So let me know which you would use and why in the comments below, and we can install one of them in the pricing in the next episode. If you'd like to see that episode, then please subscribe. And if you enjoyed this, then I think you'll enjoy the book that I wrote in that price called Java to Kotlin, a refactoring guidebook. Details of that are in the show notes below. Thanks for watching.